Hi everyone, welcome to Doja and Sprint 16, São Pedro. So, um, as I mentioned in the release notes, the key feature for this release um, is just the fact that profiles are now part of the meta model. Um, it sounds uh, perhaps like not much, <laughs> but from the perspective of um, the long term objectives of this project and what we're trying to achieve, it's actually quite a key release. Um, so what I'll do in this presentation is, uh, with this demo, is I'll try to give a background as to why profiles are necessary, or wh what we use them for, and what is uh, the new thing that we've added with this release in terms of having profiles in the, in the meta model. Uh, to do that, I'll just return to our usual Hello World model that we've been modifying since Spring 13 or so. And uh, as you can see on the other world model, there's a number of configuration uh, entries inside of a, of a model. Even a trivial model such as this one contains the um, best part of 20 different keys uh, at the top level for the model. Um, so some of these um, elements configure different aspects of Dogen. For example, um, model modules configures the namespace um, that will contain the model. The input technical space defines um, the programming language in this particular case for the processing, uh, the references uh, import other models, um, and so forth. And so as you can see, there's a very large number of uh, configuration entries. And this is just a very simple model. Um, so from the beginning, it was clear that it would not be very easy to create models this way if you had to supply all these, these keys. And the other thing to bear in mind is these configuration keys are just applied to one model element, which is the model itself. Um, you could have and any number of configuration keys on each of these model elements. Um, so soon this will sort of become a new building. Uh, so originally, when we bumped into this problem for the first time, we created a notion of profiles. And profiles was, uh, as with many other things in Dogen, just a, a separate JSON file that was a very simple way of um, sharing uh, these configurations, these number of, key of configuration keys uh, between models. But they were totally separate from um, normal modeling. Um, there was no connection between modeling other than the fact that there was a configuration key that pulled in the JSON file into the model. Um, the more we read the literature, the more obvious it, it became that um, these profiles are actually just metamodel entities themselves. And once we understood that, um, the power of, uh, of integrating variability with modeling became quite, quite apparent. Um, so as an example, let's just take the, um, um, the decoration keys that we've got here. Uh, what I've done is I created a very simple profiles model um, containing a, a profile template, which is decoration. And what this profile template has is it has the, the keys that we saw a second ago, um, but these are now in the class. Um, this class contains a stereotype of pro profile templates, which tells Dogen what to do with it. Um, so what we'll do is... Um, we will first enable the profile that is done by origin of mass variability um, that profile and we just set that to be equal to profile at uh, some profile of it. Um, in effect this has to match the name of the profile as you see here so in this particular case the profile is called decoration actually and the model it's called profiles so the name here should be profiles decoration. And then what we can do is we can then remove these keys we got here. And if all goes according to plan, and the demo gods are with us, um, if I return to my Emacs session and I go to shell, First, let's just make sure that we've got the right version of Dogen 16, so that's correct. And then let's just generate the target of um, uh, yes. So we generate this model, and then if I hop over to the Git um, representation. So now what's happened here is you see a lot of changes in the model. In the, model. the reason why is because um, we didn't have the copyright set. Uh, originally on the decorations. However, I um, the new profile that I've created contains a copyright notice and that copyright notice is set to this value, copyright. Um, so by putting that, that um, decoration in there, 
with a profile template, I was able to share that with any model, um, provided that I just do a reference to the model, and provided that I then call um, the, the profile, t uh, associate the profile template with, um, with the model itself. Uh, so this is the first level of usefulness of profiles. Um, it's already quite a, a good thing to have. But the second level use, useless, usefulness uh, of profiles is the ability to attach uh, behaviors to model elements. So for instance, um, I'm just going to uh, quickly hop over to the Doja and profiles model. Um, and what I'll do is I'll um, just steal one of these profiles. Uh, let's just go for pretty printable. I copy that across over to our profiles model. Now, um, what you see here is I have a profile here, co-generated, and then I have another profile, pretty printable, which inherits from co-generated. Uh, and what it does is it sets the um, I.O. facet to true. Um, in addition, I will also get a base profile, such as, for example, typeable. Okay, so now, if I take these two profiles, Font is a bit big, but you get the gist of it. And if I save this, um, and now what I'll do is first let's just commit all the changes that we've done so that we don't have uh, any uh, confusion. Um, update, copy, right, notice, for example. Okay, so now what I'll do is, um, so as you can see at the moment, um, if I look at what's been generated, the code that's been generated, um, I can see that all the facets are enabled. So hash, IO, ODB, serialization, test state, and so forth. Um, however, I would like to set for one of these types to just have the typeface facet enabled. So if I take, say, one property, and set this to become must type all. Just for good measure, what we'll do is um, make sure we copy the exact name to avoid uh, any typing uh, any typos. Um, so I'll set that to do that. And now, if I co-generate my model again, if I hop over to the shell. Okay, the problem here, of course, is that um, we're making a reference to um, disable all facets. So we pulled in that profile, and we didn't pull in all the dependencies. Um, so let's go back to this model, and let's look for disable all facets. This chap here. And if I copy that too. Now, we should be okay. We will just change the dependency here to now reference to profiles. These are all facets. Hopefully, the demo gods will now allow us to proceed. And as expected, um, we were able to generate the model. And now something interesting should happen. Um, so now what you, what you can see now is um, we have now removed all the non-type facets of that um, of that um, particular um, class. So for instance, hash is gone, um, ODB is being deleted, and so forth. So um, this this uh, particular profile only enables the type definition, that's why it's called typable. Um, but in addition, um, we can also compose uh, behaviors. So for instance, let's just say that, um, what I'll do is I'll just stage all these files so you can see changes. Um, so now if I return to my dia diagram and if I go to other world, see in where we have typable, if I just add pretty printable to and save, and if I now go back to my shell and generate again, and 
hop over to Git. And now what you can see here is, uh, because this type is now pretty printable, um, the IO facet is enabled for the type as well as the type definition. And as you can see, you can use this these uh, profiles um, to start creating composition um, across the facet space. Uh, so for each different uh, type of model entity uh, or groups of model entities that you require certain subsets of configuration, you can start to create these profiles with appropriate names such as serializable, hashable, print printable and so forth. And um, the name of your profile actually reflects the behavior um, f across the facet space of that particular um, class, which makes uh, the, the profiles actually quite uh, uh, much more sensible than just uh, having a whole number of keys set inside of an object. Uh, if I look at these stereotypes, I can now see what is that this uh, class has the ability to do. Um, and of course, nothing stops you from creating um, a profile that inherits some type of all and pretty printable and give it a name so you don't have to necessarily have um, 20 different stereotypes in a profile in a class you can just have one the key thing is to look for meaning across the definition of the profiles um, such that when you look at the at the model entity the model element you can see clearly what the model element is supposed to do in terms of the facet space um, and so this is actually quite a useful thing um, in order to start moving towards the world of uh, software product lines because once you start defining these behaviors in a, in a core model, and then um, you can share those behaviors across a, a number of uh, uh, models that, that are part of one product or a group of products, a product family, um, and it allows you to create a, a product line with um, common behaviors across the product line. So it's the beginning, in effect, of uh, SPL support in Doja um, in, a, in a flexible way. Um, so. Um, that is the profiles. Um, so if I now hop over again to um, how the presentation. Um, so in terms of next sprint, um, next sprint we're going to continue doing some more meta model work. Uh, this time we're going to turn our attention to features. So um, what you've seen at the moment in terms of configuration is you have made use of a number of features that are defined inside of Dojen. But the way those features are defined at the moment is very similar to the way the profiles were defined, in that there's a number of JSON files plus some some code that then integrates a feature um, with the meta model, so it's not very uh, extensible. So we're going to take the similar approach to what we've done with decorations and what we've done um, with profiles, and have proper meta model support for these entities, such that you could just def define a feature uh, at the meta model level, and Dogen would automatically generate all the code necessary to integrate that feature with the variability model um, instead of having to do things manually. And this work had started in the previous sprint, but we just didn't complete it. Uh, and that's all for Sprint 16. Thanks very much for watching.